Here we go. Square Dance Callers Talking. Tonight, I have a traveling caller. He calls for clubs and festivals all over the United States. He's a member of the Board of Governors in Caller Lab. He's an advanced program committee vice chairman for Caller Lab and a membership committee chair for the Virginia State Callers Association. He's done some recordings in his time. He's been calling for quite a while. We're going to talk about that tonight. Jeremy Butler, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. It's good to see you, man. I mean, it's only been a couple of days because we were all at the National Convention. That was a good time, of course. Yeah, yeah. It so, was a uh, good week. And we'll see and We'll see if there's any stories we want to share about some of the stuff going on there. And that's completely up to you. Um, but uh, so where are you? Where do you live? So I, I live in Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia, which is right there on the coast, of course. Okay. Uh, you know, more, more people know Norfolk, which is, you know, right right next door. Um, but uh, the uh, my, my clubs, I don't actually have any clubs in Virginia Beach, actually. Uh, my uncle, uh, with, who, whom you may know, Matt Worley. Uh, I didn't know that was your uncle. Yes, I do. Okay. That happens a lot. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He he actually calls for the clubs here in Virginia Beach. So I have, I have a club in Newport News that unfortunately hasn't started dancing again since COVID. Wow, okay. we're still working on that. And then I've got a club uh, in Richmond, which is my own caller run club, which is an advanced club. Um, and we've been dancing now since last October. Uh, got that back up and running. Finally found a venue. That was the issue with getting that one back up and running. But yeah, we are, and we're dancing. We're dancing pretty strong. I just finished a, an advanced class with them, and uh, we're, we're we're dancing two to three squares every night. Fantastic. So, so when did you start calling? Uh, so my well, see, so you always you always run into this. Uh, uh, people people have different times when they gauge when they started when they started calling uh i count when i called my first full dance by myself okay. uh so that's when i that's how i considered my start date which was actually uh just a couple days ago uh because my anniversary date uh because i called for uh my grandfather's club uh bob Worley. um he i called for his club while he and matt were at the nationals um which was june of 1996 so i'm um, right at what is that 27 years very nice how long have it when did you start dancing i mean obviously it's in the family from what you're telling me so far yeah and i avoided it as long as possible um the uh I was, you know, I was, I'd been around it ever since I was a child, but um, I, I ended up um, trying to um, kind of steer myself away from it. I just kind of stayed away. I, of course, I had been around, around it and around dances and gone to dances and all that. Uh, but in 94, uh, my grandfather asked me to uh, take a video camera and record the Sweetheart Weekend Festival, which is a, uh, uh, well, it's a weekend convention that we used to put on. Uh, here in Virginia Beach uh, in February. And he asked me to record, you know, take some video and that sort of thing. And I just happened to run into a girl there that uh, I also knew from another uh, organization. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at that point it was like, okay, well, I guess I have to learn how to dance now. Um, and I did. That's what draws some people in. I had some people have that story for sure. Um, I got pulled in uh, because of my wife uh, years ago because of my in-laws who were being dancers. So I can see that, especially as a younger, and of course I wasn't a younger kid at the time, but yeah, if you go and you see some girl that, you know, you may as well learn it. That'll get you exactly. closer. I was, I was 17, you know, <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It's time, time, time to, time to do it. So, so yeah, I started calling at the age of 19. Um, and that's actually kind of a funny story. My, uh, my grandfather actually tricked me uh into it i i like to say he tricked me into it i don't know if it was his intention to do it or not how's that uh well so uh they were having the local callers association the hampton roads callers association was having these uh training sessions for callers um and they had you know a couple of newer callers in there and uh they my grandfather said well you know why don't you come come to the meeting and we'll uh, and just to fill out the square so you can help us 
you know, fill out the square and they can, you know, so that these callers can try and get some practice in. So, okay. Fine. I'll go do that. Uh, and of course I'm sitting there and they're doing all these little drills. You know, I don't know if you know, you know, these little, these little site calling drills where you're, you know, two calls away from a corner box. What, are, what you know, what two calls can you use to get to a corner box? And, uh, and there's that the callers are up there having, a, having a really hard time. And I'm thinking in my head, so star through, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, past the ocean recycle this is this isn't that hard what's <laughs> yeah, yeah. so i after i got after we got done there and then we got home i was like i think i'd like to learn how to <laughs> very okay well i do know some of those drills because you put me through them about six days ago at the convention with the gsi school so yeah i'm aware of those some of my favorite. So, but I do enjoy it and I get a lot out of it. And you're a big asset to have as a, one of the instructors on there. It's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So you start dancing, you're calling when you're 19. Um, yep. So tell me about that. What do you remember from that first dance? Wow. That, that first dance, of course, uh, back then is, you know, 96. We we're still using records. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had my, had my, um, my little briefcase full of, full of records and I had my old uh, electro voice microphone which was the little nice. the little skinny metal one mm -hmm. uh, silver those. silver metal yeah the little silver metal <laughs> that one the types you can ham hammer nails with um and um let's see I remember I, I had dangles made um for for the dance specifically uh so there's there's only a few of those floating around still very nice. uh, but you but if you ever see if you ever see a dangle it's a little it's a blue a blue dangle with white writing on it, it says jeremy's first nice <laughs> very nice that's a great idea yeah i thought it was i thought it was kind of cool uh and and people still you know there's there's well there's only a few people left that still proudly wear that that dangle but uh you know because most of them have either moved on from square dancing or moved somewhere else in the country right, or, right. You know, or or have moved off of this off of uh, this this plane of existence. So um, we've uh, there's a, there's only a couple, but I do know a couple people still here in the area that have a cup that have that dangle. Um, but it was it was a it was a um, frightening dance. Let's just say that <laughs> very um, nerve wracking. You know, I, I wish I'd have paid more attention. I called so many tips for about two years starting out. Um, I don't know when my first dance was. I, for about two years, I just did singing calls. And later on, I started doing some patter. And at some point, I just started sending emails out that I could find on the Internet to clubs. And some people responded. And I booked a dance that way and just walked in cold and said, here, this is what I can do. And I'm, I would love to have recorded it. It's got to be just awful to listen to now. Looking back and seeing where I've come from for 12 years, you know, so I can't imagine what the pattern was. The singing was oh, always yeah. OK, but the pattern had to be all over the place. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm, su I'm sure mine was absolutely horrid. <laughs> so you remember you remember your first dance and it was terrifying. Yeah. Yep. What um, where else? You said uh, I looked at your website. You've called all over the United States and everything. Uh, what places jump out to you is some of the enjoyable places or halls or something that you called it? Well, there's, you know, there's some places, uh, there's some really cool places that uh, we used to dance up here on the, uh, the Eastern shore of Virginia. Um, there's, um, there's some, there's some nice places that we used to, that uh, we've, we've danced at in uh, the, the Shenandoah Valley um, has, has some nice dance halls. Uh, you know, one of my favorite places to call is at the uh, the Pride uh, RV Resort. Uh, you know, the that Tony has uh, that place is it's just so much fun. That dance hall is so nice, and uh, it's just a relaxing you know time out there in the valley. So uh, that's 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 one place that sticks out to me. Um, back in the early 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 days, actually, this is this is kind of another interesting little story. I was I was out in. Uh, I went to the English Mountain Resort, which was a um, another square dancing resort that was Gary Shoemakes um, up there on well English Mountain, um, and um, 
I spent spent a weekend there, did a uh, danced an advanced weekend there, and the callers were Jerry Biggerstaff, Gary Shoemake, and Jack Platties. Wow, a very a very young, yeah, very much nice. younger Jack Platties. Um, and uh, he he probably doesn't remember that, but of course that was the the first time I'd ever met him and danced with him. Um, so that was that was uh, that was another memorable place. One of those places, you know, all wood floor. They had a square dance shop in the in the hall and all sorts of stuff. So that was that was cool. So you say you have two clubs now: a caller club, and then a caller run club, and then another one. And that, yeah, and then my plus club, the uh, Square Edges. Uh, they dance in Newport News when they're dancing. We haven't uh, again. We haven't. Um, started back up after covid yet so it's uh and it's just a matter of getting back to the venue getting back in the venue and getting that everything squared away with that again uh, we dance, we dance at a church it's a, it's a church, church. So. okay yeah um how did when when you do when you are dancing whether it be a club dance or you know somebody says hey come over here to virginia washington you know georgia wherever how do you start? How do you program a dance? What What is your steps? Your process? Well, of course, the first thing I look at is, you know, if there's a if there's a theme involved with the dance, you know, if it's an anniversary dance or, a, you know, a July 4th dance or something like that, then, of course, I'm going to I'm going to pay attention to the theme and, and uh, work on that. But I also like to think about, you know, what. Um, what calls I want to use, uh, what calls I want to want to want to play with that night. And of course, it depends on if it's a mainstream club, a plus club or if they're, you know, I've actually called for uh, uh, there's there's one club I called for up in I think it was Detroit that uh, does half half plus and half advanced. And it's, it's like kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that, but, that makes it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so it's a, it's a little a little strange. It's like a 50-50, but plus an advanced instead of plus and mainstream. So, um, and of course, you know, if it's an SSD club, you know, that's that's something to to consider also. Um, it, it, SSD is typically a little. I actually find it a little more interesting than mainstream um, <laughs> uh, because you can you can actually do a lot more because the dancers are so much more. Uh, attuned to the calls that they have learned okay. um, just just personal experience i i was one of the early adopters of uh, the ssd program uh, actually it was funny because my um my fiance jamie she was um uh, having a dance with jerry story and jerry story came in and jerry was talking to me about Talking to me about his new program and talking about how how it was gonna how, how it was necessary and how we were gonna do it and what what all well, the benefits of it and everything and I went sounds good to me I'm gonna try and get my club on board and and I did nice so uh, so that was that was good but uh, back to back to your your original question you know when I'm when I'm programming these dances I, I didn't generally try to think of uh, you know if there's a theme if there's if there's a particular uh, set of uh, dancers down there that know me for something in specific. Um, you know, I've got, I, I got one lady out in the Shenandoah Valley. She always asks for one particular song and I know she's going to ask for it. And I got another guy in Richmond that every time I'm calling a dance in Richmond, I was going, I know he's always going to ask for this one particular song. So got to include that in my program. Right. right. <laughs> we do. And once you get around enough, you go in there and there is somebody there's always a song or something somebody wants to hear. And that's it. And you have to go with it and you hope that the other people haven't heard enough of it. You know, yeah. one person really likes it. So so when you're programming the dances and you obviously the whirlies um being related to you and you said you met Jack at an early age, who were some of your influences in calling? Uh, so, you know, I mean, of, of course, aside from my, uh, my grandfather and Matt being, you know, a family and of course being looking to them for, uh, the, the starter moves on how to get, how to get started. Um, when I started, when I, when I started learning how to call, I really admired and looked up to, uh, actually my, the person that I kind of modeled myself after, uh, if you want to put it that way, was Bill Harrison. Wow, okay. uh, I, really, I really enjoyed his choreography. 
and just his his inflections and his humor and all that stuff. So I uh, kind of modeled myself after him and uh, kind of went down that kind of went down that path. You know, that lasted, you know, of course, it, you know, I did that for a couple of years and then I started forming my own uh, my own personality on the stage. But uh, that's 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 where I started. Okay. Yeah. And Bill's a great guy. I've taken a couple of schools um, that he was a part of early on. And um, I really got a lot from him. I haven't seen him a whole lot in the last couple of years. Just well, we didn't dance for the longest time for a couple of years, a year and a half. Um, and what I mean by that is conventions and all that, when that shut down and we lost one caller lab uh, during COVID and all. So that's when I get to see most people or yeah. whether it be a national convention. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, and and uh, of course, COVID, COVID was a uh, was was a thing, and and uh, he uh, he slowed down a little bit after COVID, but um, you know, he's he's still around. Of course, he's not far from me, so he's okay. Know, he's, only, okay. he's only he's only a few hours from from where I am. He calls up in the Washington D.C. Baltimore area a lot, okay. I did not which is about a four hour trip for me. So not that not that far off, and I'm up there calling quite often myself. I didn't know he was out of there. Okay. Well, I'll have to catch up with him one day. Um, and like I said, I, I, I think the one of the last, uh, probably the last school Tim Mariner ever had was in North Carolina, and Bill was on that with him. And I took that, and uh, I think Tim passed away about seven months after that. Ooh. And um, so, and, so that was a few years ago now. Yes. 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 You call SSD up to C one. C2. I do. I, I call through C. So I, I say I call C one and a half. Okay. So uh, if you ask me to call C two, I could probably sit down and write write a couple of tips for you. But uh, other than that, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a C two caller. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty fluent in C one, uh, although I I I still have a lot to learn uh, even in even in that program because there. The jump between advanced and challenge is, is gigantic, um, and and even even from plus to advanced is gigantic. But I made that jump, you know, twenty years ago. So uh, it's the it's the it's that it's that next jump which I made. Gosh, what uh, I think I started calling challenge about uh, seven or eight years ago now. So to put you on the spot, since you have all that up, I mean, the just the vocabulary and the knowledge of the moves, do you have a favorite call? You know, I, I get I get asked I get asked that question from time to time, and actually, you know what's what's funny is I think my favorite call um, is one of the simplest yet one of the hardest, uh, and that's roll. Okay. And that makes sense uh, because because it takes you it, it, it one it always flows right mm -hmm. and two um it it it, uh, it it feels good and it can take you from one formation into another and you just totally didn't expect that it was going to happen right. uh, you know you can go you can go from some place that looks completely normal into some place that you're like oh my gosh how where did this come from <laughs> uh and and that's and to me that's just neat <laughs> no it is i i agree with that um and I, i've never thought of role like that so i appreciate that <laughs> so you've called all over the united states um where are they all over well, I, there's, uh, there's a, a few places i haven't portion. been yet <laughs> um well so on that note where would you call do you have are there any places out there you've heard of that you would like to call well, you know, I've 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 been wanting to get uh, get into Texas and uh, you know and out to uh, parts of California and and that the, those types of areas. Um, the uh, I haven't I haven't been out that far west. Um, as a matter of fact, most of, most of what I do is East Coast uh, centric. So you know, I've I've been. Let's see if if you count dances that i've been contracted to do i think i've gone uh, as far west as minnesota and north i've been up to uh, massachusetts um south i've been down to florida um so you know that's i went out to 
Kentucky, I think, calling call a dance out there before, but uh, um, I, 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 I'm more 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 regional at the moment. But okay. I, I wouldn't mind um, wink wink uh, getting some yeah, yeah. picks out west. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and well, just being a part of Color Lab, there's plenty of folks that can get you out west. I'm quite sure in Texas. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, I love Florida just um, since I'm in Georgia and it's close in regard. Um, but, uh, and there's a few, couple of clubs down there I've called for. And um, at some point I'm going to retire from what I normally do and uh, move down there. And so hopefully I can get some more, but again, I want, I, one of my little goals as I started the call, it was to call in all 50 States and I've got nine now. So I still got a, quite a road ahead. Um and of course, that doesn't include any West Coast, like you were saying. I'd love to get out there myself at some point. Right. So, you've recorded for a couple of labels. Tell me about that. Well, of course, uh, you know the Whirlies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, my grandfather, uh, who unfortunately passed away this past November or uh, February, uh, and Matt, uh, of course, owned Crown. Crown. Okay. So I did my first singing call on Crown. Uh, which was Bed of Roses. Um, oh, Statler Brothers. Very nice. Yes, yes. Uh, and that came out pretty well. Uh, not too not too disappointed with that. Um, and uh, and then I actually it was, it was it was that same that same trip that uh, uh, Jerry Story talked me into doing SSD. I pitched him a song, and he said, you know, if you pitch he he told me he said if you pitch me a song and I like it, I'll I'll let you record it, and. I, I said I said well I've been thinking about doing this one for a long time and he goes send it to me and I'll and I'll see and I'll see what I can do and he listened to it and he said he said we're doing it and the 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 here's the thing the dance uh, where we had this conversation was the beginning of June at the nationals he had the music wow. done nice. <laughs> and that was the nationals in Springfield. Okay. Uh, so it was like he's like I got the music all done for you. Here you go. It's like wow, okay. And then uh, and then we, we and then we went out to Nashville and recorded it on uh, Royal. Um, that following, I think it was September, I uh, went out there and did the whole uh, hilltop uh, 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 it, studio experience. And it, it, that is a good time. It really is. Um, what uh, Tony and Ted have going out there now with that, that with the hilltop. Yeah. Um, I just finished up that two years ago now. It's nuts watching those musicians just put together some um, music you in know, no to, time flat. When I ha I have zero uh, musical instrument ability at all, um, and I've tried guitars and everything else, and it's just not going to happen at this point. Um, but to see people walk in and they hand them a piece of paper and they just sit down and start playing, I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. Um, so it, it's impressive to have. So yeah, that so that was that was a lot of fun. That was you know so so I've recorded one on Crown and one on Royal. The one I did on Royal was uh, "Hurt So Good," John Mellencamp. Um, I love that song. I do that song quite often. And so uh, so I I like to say that I recorded on Crown Royal. Crown Royal, that's a good hook right there. <laughs> Recording artist for Crown Royal, very nice, very nice. Um. Oh yeah, and I, we we don't even need to go down the John Cougar trail because we'll be here four hours. I love John Cougar. Um, good stuff. If you're not listening to Square Dance music, what are you listening to? That's an interesting question. Um, the um, I like the '80s. That's I, I'm I'm an '80s music fan. Uh, if it if it was if it was in the '80s and the early '90s, of course, those are my high high school years. Uh, that's what I, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I that's that's my that's my big listen to. Um, I also listened to some of the uh, some country in the early '90s. So I you know some of the Brooks and Dunn and Sawyer Brown and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but the uh, but yeah, as as far as as far as uh, what I, my go to genre is the '80s, but. Uh, yeah, I do listen to just about anything. Yeah, you know, classic rock and uh, a little bit of a little, 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 little bit of headbanging metal when I feel like it. Very <laughs> nice. Very man after my own heart, right there. Very nice. You know, just you know, every, every you know, a little Power, power Man Five Thousand when I feel. Oh, when I feel, okay. just screaming a little. <laughs> 
That's that's awesome, man. And, and, you know, I, I, again, I, I was in the high school in the eighties too, and you can argue it all you want. That was the best time for music because it was all over the board. Well, and um, it's coming back around now. You listen to some of the stuff on the on the radio today, and it's like, well, that sounds like the eighties. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, so, I've noticed the older I've gotten, uh, I start. I I don't keep up with. I I, I know what today's music kind of is. But the older I get, the further back I go. And when I went into my 40s, I realized I started listening to more 70s. Right. And then when I went into my 50s, I started listening. I'm, I listened to 60s and all. And I'm just like, well, I, I don't know where that's going to end. If I get much older, I'll be in the 20s again with <laughs> flapper music and all, whatever. So, yeah, probably not um, that far, but. But, it, but yeah, of course, with at, at the time, MTV coming out uh, in the 80s. Uh, I, I I think that did something for music because oh, it was certainly. different. It was it was a different um, format. You get to see it in all the videos, so I I, I can appreciate that. I'm mean, I'm glad you're an '80s guy. I didn't know that, and especially oh, yeah, metal. Big, so so as a result, I'm a big fan of Ted's music. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I told him that. I said, unfortunately, I, I can get more in the range of a country song. I would love to do. I've got uh, his. Uh, outfield your love and i've done oh, it a yeah. couple times. i only do that at my clubs because i don't want to go out on the road and let somebody hear me try and do it because it's just it's rough that's um, funny because because driving driving back from uh the nationals uh that came up that came on our, our playlist and I, I was listening i'm going man i've got to practice this one I, i've got the singing call i've got to do i've just got to get this one under my belt yeah <laughs> it, it, it's a good one um and I, I don't know what label it's on but i have um uh, from the Breakfast Club, don't you forget about me. Yep, um, yep. And I and I've done that. that. That's not far off. I can get close to it. Of course, it doesn't sound like the original by any means. Um, yeah, we'll work on that, man. Next time I next time I see you, whether it be call a lab or a dance or something, I want you to break out uh, a little bit of outfield for me. <laughs> Let's see. So we got that. Um, anything? I'm you help with the G GSI. Yeah. teaching so any words for callers whether it be beginners um what, what's your thoughts on that well you know um it's funny because T tony's been telling this story recently about this uh the, the, what was it was it tony no it was jet there was jet was telling this story about this australian caller uh that uh couldn't couldn't uh find his corner with a with with, with, with a with a 10-foot pole and uh, but everybody loves him or loved him uh, because his timing and his material and his choreography and his flow modules were just so good. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't care whether or not he actually found his corner. So I, I would have to, I, my, my main advice uh, on that is basically just that <laughs> is make sure that your timing is on point. Um, when my grandfather st uh, started me learning uh, the first thing he did was he he had me pick out a pattern record. He threw it on. I, th I threw it threw it on the turntable, and he says, "Now I want you to call, but I don't want you to. I, I'm not worried about if the calls fit together. I don't want to worry if they make they make sense or at all. I just want to hear good timing uh, with the music." Nice. Okay. Then that's how I started. Is is just learning that good that that timing with the music, you know. And and, and then he then he'd come in and he'd be like. Well, you can't say boys run that fast after you say swing through. You got to wait a couple of couple of beats because swing through takes six beats, and that's you know he so he started drilling that stuff into my head, uh, you know, at, at at a very early stage, and it really really helped me uh, because you know the timing is is so critical. Uh, you see so many so many uh, these days that uh, are doing the stop and go thing, yeah. and it's it's just not it's not fun to dance to it's just not it's just not good and um you know that if you can avoid that uh you're you you've got 90 percent of the game ahead of you <laughs> it, I, I i agree um and from the gsi schools and all the other schools i've taken the ken Ratucci schools um and some other independent schools that's one thing you know is the modules and now and correct me if i'm wrong uh, the gsi when they were doing the videos over covid you did one on modules didn't you 
I did. I did. See, I, and I, I, I did not look that up. I remember you doing it. <laughs> um, so, and modules do help with the flow and the timing. Well, yeah, because it's a memorized set of calls, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you don't have to think about what you're going to call next because it's already pre-programmed. Right. Uh, so that that's uh, that's that that helps helps with the timing. Now, you know, of course, with experience and with, uh, you know, the a few, a few uh, mic hours under your belt, mm -hmm. um, you you can you can start pulling calls out and, you know, replacing this with that. You know, let me let me tell you one of the hardest things to do is, you know, you've just, you, you're, you want to use a get out that involves a swing through and a, and a boys run and a bend the line. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's the way it starts from a corner box and you're trying to get to that corner box and you just did a Ferris wheel and you go, okay, I just got to do a square through three. So you do a square through three and then you go, oh crap. Because guess what? You can't do a swing through after a square through three. Right. So now right. you've got to now you've got to throw in a little a little tiny zero or use some equivalent to get to that same place. So, you, right. <laughs> so uh. you but you when you start thinking when you can start seeing that stuff on the fly, um, you know, but but the modules are the way that you get to that point, you know. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, I, I enjoy talking about modules. I think modules are um fantastic especially for a caller in their first um in their first few years mm -hmm. um i don't think i called anything but modules in my first probably five years calling i think we're a, a lot of and i'm certainly not an experience um as a lot of callers are um but i've been to the schools and i'm doing my own dances one thing that i learned is First of all, people will tell you, man, I can't memorize stuff. I'll never be able to do that. You're not asking somebody to memorize an entire tip, you know, um, and, and that's the way I first took it. I thought when they would say you got to memorize it, I'm thinking, OK, I'll listen to you on YouTube or Tony or anybody on YouTube and I'll write all that stuff down. And I'm like, well, I can't memorize that. I'm going to leave out a touch a quarter, you know, and then I'm I'm in trouble at that point. But. Then when the modules, your with your class and going to the schools, the modules taught me a couple of things. One, it's not hard to learn four or five modules, and that'll put together a tip because you can do it from different positions. The other thing is I quit worrying about my get out or where the corner was because I was going to go through three or four modules, and then I would look, all right, now I got to get to, the, I got to get my get out. I got to find, I got to pair somebody, but I've, I've done nine, 10, 11 calls off of modules. Right, so exactly. uh, the, the modules are, are a huge help when it comes to learning the call because it takes pressure off of it. I used to worry about, okay, swing through. I don't want to do boys run. You know, and I'm thinking it, and there's your stop and go because I don't know where I want to go. But going in with about, hey, let's try these three or four modules through here. You know, you, you, you flow because it's a flow module is what they are. It's just funny. It's funny you say that too, because you, especially your your swing swing through. Okay, I don't want a boys run. Was, so I I actually challenged myself one night, and it was it was hard. I challenged myself that I would not call swing through boys run. I would not call boys run after a swing through. I could call anything else I wanted to. I could call boys run, and I could call swing through, but I could call the pair together back to back. Yep, the whole night. Wow! Oh my god. <laughs> That was hard, especially when you start getting into like singing call figures and stuff. Oh my goodness! That I've was... heard that joke that um a lot of places think that swing through boys run is the actual call, right? You know, so. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's 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 absolutely uh, you know the, the whole the whole idea with modules and everything. And I did I called mostly modules the entire um, the entire national convention there. Um, when I was in the plus hall or the, or the, 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 the band hall, that's all I was using. I was, uh, that's, you know, um, uh, obviously when I was doing the last square standing, I was freewheeling a lot, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, that was a matter of trying to, trying to throw a few, few curve curve balls at them. Sure. Yeah, I did. It was, I had two spots in the plus hall and it was absolutely nothing but modules, um, one of the tips I had 
there was one entire square of my dancers um, from my club. And uh, so I watched them. They were up front. I made sure they came up front. But I thought, you know, I'm not going to cite this because there will be some stop and go. So I went. I, I probably went for about three minutes just on modules. I knew where everybody was going to be when I called it because I knew I knew the modules I was using. And yep. it, was a, it was a really good tip, and I enjoyed it. I went up to the mainstream. Same thing. I had a square of uh, my dancers and one other square because it was a small little mainstream hall they had. And uh, I cited some of it, but since it was just mainstream and I, I kept them moving, um, so I felt good about that. Yeah, that's, so, that's but that's but your modules, your 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 class on modules and the work you do with it are a big help to people yeah, like me and other college for sure. It's a huge thing, and I think I think you know as, as far as get outs go, it's the it's the same thing. You know, if you if you program mm-hmm. your get outs, so the way I write my get outs, I thought I did one of the one of the <laughs> the class videos I did uh, on get outs also. Uh, you know, I, I write my get outs from corner boxes or partner lines or whatever. So, um, when I am ready to resolve, I will get them into one of those positions. I'll have a get out in mind and I will, and I will, you know, engage that, that, that get out. So I, I don't end up with the stop and go. Um, and that's, that's just what I, the, the, the way that I run it now, again, you're talking memory, right? right. Um, I think. Uh, I think I heard this. Uh, I think this was uh, from uh, Jack. I think Jack said this at one of the uh, one of the teaching sessions I I I was in involved with with him. He said, um, and, I, and I believe it's probably true, is that you could probably you you memorize about 10, 10 of them, and you got about ten of them floating in your head, right. and and you learn a new one, sure, but one of them is going to get kicked out. You know, <laughs> it's going to replace one of the other ones. All right. Yeah, so you can only really, really cycle through about ten of them at a time, um, and you know, of course, you know, some people are better than others as far as memory goes. But uh, and, I, and I think that's about right. You know, it's that's that's about what what I uh, what I cycle through is about ten different ten different get outs that I use, and you throw equivalents in there, and that turns into what twenty different equivalent uh, yeah. uh, you know, get outs, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, uh, equivalents are in my mind they're number two behind modules because once you have a module in your head if you know an equivalent for a swing through swing through boys run if you if you have an equivalent for that then you can use that but it's not swing through boys run so that certainly does help exactly my wife is on the way home from she's in Macon now so i've got about another hour before she gets home all right then uh yeah so she's traveling right now coming back she had to go down to savannah for a little while <clears throat> let's see what else um that was really good uh the lessons for the callers i appreciate that uh so now are you looking to do um accredited caller coach at some point or no i'm working on it um... oh are you okay Right now, I'm accruing hours of uh, teach time and all that stuff. Um, of course, I've been, you know, involved with the GSI Caller School for the last three years. Okay. Um, and I've done a few, uh, you know, individual coaching sessions with some individual callers and uh, a couple of things with, um, uh, you know, teaching some some individual sessions at. Uh, uh, various state symposiums and conventions and stuff like that. Um, so there, there's there's been a few a few things I've gotten gotten under there. You know, as far as the official process goes, it's actually uh, you know I, I don't think I've filed the paperwork yet, but okay. I'm, I'm 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 about ready to. Um, I've got the got the caller coach manual and uh, nice okay reading through that. So um, of course there. Every time, every time I go, I I think I found about four mistakes in it, which is funny. But <laughs> that's good. And you go in there and make some corrections. That's gonna work out. No, what's what's funny is I I keep, I keep pointing them out, and pe- people are going, I don't think anybody's ever caught that before. And I'm like, does anybody actually read this thing? <laughs> that's awesome. So you're in Call Lab. Tell me about the um the advanced um committee that you're on what does that entail so yeah so i'm the 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 vice chair of the advanced committee uh ray brenzi is the chairman um and basically we just we just maintain the advanced program list 
Um, if somebody comes up with a question or a problem that they have with a definition, they want something changed, they want something uh, to move forward, uh, then we bring it to the rest of the committee and we, you know, we talk about it, we discuss it, and then decide if we're going to make any changes or not. Um, right now, we are actually finishing up our triennial review uh, uh, process, and uh, I don't know if Ray's actually sent the email out yet, but he's about to. So uh, I can say uh, we will not be uh, adding Zing. We will not be adding with the flow. Uh, we will not be dropping zigzag, and we will be changing the definition of zigzag. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's part of the triennial review. You know, we review the the color lab, make sure that we review the uh, every program uh, at least once every three years. Uh, we could make changes anytime we want, but uh, we have to we have to look at uh, um, possible changes every three years minimum so and we've been wanting to uh, that's kind of like a, our little ray and mine's little pet project is redefining zigzag so we're moving forward with that one okay very nice and i got and I've, I've talked on some of these podcasts before i've tried it I've, I've taken the advanced lessons twice from beginning to end but there's only one club that really dances it here in the georgia area where i am and uh, I just don't get to their club very often. So just like with anything else, after about six months, I'd forgotten everything, you yeah. know, at that level. No, then, yeah, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to dance it. Uh, it. Well, I mean, you know, once you've danced it for a little while, you, then it, then it starts to sink in, and and you can go longer without having danced it. Right. But but yeah, now initially, after especially right after class, if you don't get some uh, dance time in, you'll. Yeah you'll lose it. And that's what I did. And it's happened twice. And I, at this point, I don't think I'll take them again, but I will. Well, maybe we'll run a blast class at some point. Maybe. I would love that. I, uh, I know Jet had one, but it, it for whatever reason, it fell through at um, Pride coming up this yep. year. And I was planning on going to that. Um, but at some point, there'll be another one. And uh, I'll maybe run through that. So if you put one together, I'll come up to Virginia Beach, take it. Take a week. Um, so more about Jeremy Butler. What's your favorite movie, you think? Oh, my favorite set movie. movies. I don't want to narrow you down to one. Give me a set. Oh, well, that's, you know, okay. Uh, favorite movies. Uh, Star Wars, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we can just go down that whole list. Um, that's uh, e easily, you know, I was born in 1977, so my... Uh, that's the that's the year of Star Wars. Oh, uh, I guess it was. And uh, so I, I've I've uh, I've always enjoyed those movies. Uh, I can probably I, the, at least the original trilogy I can quote quote to you root, word word for word. So uh, the um, you know, and I do enjoy a, a a bunch of various other movies. You know, if I had to pick one that isn't Star Wars, I would. I, I actually really like the movie The Rock. Wow, Sean Connery. Nick yeah. Cage. Okay. Yeah. Nice. For some reason, that movie is just, just so much fun. You know, Nicolas Cage speeding down San Francisco with a, in a Lamborghini. That's just fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I love Nick Cage. That's awesome. That's, that's that's a good movie. I don't think about that one very often because it doesn't get a lot of replay um, yeah. just on the venues I watch. Right. But I uh, really like that. And of course, Sean Connery always was a fan of his. And, um, with his James Bond and all the other movies he did. Um, Untouchables was probably my favorite role of his. Oh, yeah. Take out all the um, James Bonds, Untouchables. He was just phenomenal in that. Yes. Very good one. I will tell you, and there, there's a handful of movies, of course, and I'm, I'm – how old am I? I'm 56. Um, I was So I was 10. I was born in 67. I was 10 when Star Wars came out. And of all the movies I've seen at movie theaters, there's two or three that I can remember actually where I was and went. My grandfather took my brother and myself to the theater in Savannah. The theater's now been bulldozed years ago. It's gone. It's, a, it's like a, a Walmart now, I think. But I can remember going to that movie at 10 years old and watching it and thinking, this is something I've never seen before, you know, yeah. 
at, even at 10. And uh, that's always stuck with me going to that movie theater. And unfortunately, that movie theater is no longer there. So I can't go back and, you know, for the old memories or whatever. No, uh, well, and, and then they just don't make movies like that anymore. The, the, um, the, the, the whole thing with Star Wars was here, he immersed you, George Lucas, but immersed you in a world that you knew nothing about. And he explained nothing, yeah. which was awesome. You had to figure it all out on your own just by watching and 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 watching the whole thing. And they don't do that anymore. And, you know, now now it's like you know, there's 20 minutes of exposition to tell you, you know, why the world is the way it is. And right. It's like, they give you a backstory on the main characters and everything else. <laughs> you know, um, we don't need all that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was I going to say about that? Um, you know, I think the other thing about Star Wars since I was 10, although that, that's not very old, obviously. When I when you see the spaceships and everything else, just the graphics that Lucas and everybody used with that is, um, you know, I remember watching the outer space movies where you could see the strings on the spaceships, you right. know. Um, so that was the first movie. I was like, is it, is this a real place? Are they really in outer space? Where, where does this come from? And, you know, at 10, I thought man, this might be real. I don't know what I'm watching. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the other movie, uh, um, there's another handful of movies I remember going to see, but that was because I was older in high school and I have memories of those, but no, sure. Okay. Um, and there's a couple I like to throw out, especially doing since we're square dance callers and we've been doing that for quite a while. Footloose or Dirty Dancing. And I'm talking about the Footloose with Kevin Bacon, not that other movie that they made that doesn't exist in my realm. So Footloose, Kevin Bacon, Dirty Dancing, Patrick Swayze. Uh, I have to I have to go with Footloose. Nice. Um, just. The, the 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 final dance number you can't beat that that was just amazing oh let's dance <laughs> come sliding in it's awesome in this town of teenagers uh who've never danced before just go out of their minds with all the dancing you see it's right amazing, uh, you know it's amazing the the years of training it looks like they've had <laughs> you grew up in this town and never danced and look at some of this stuff you're doing it's fantastic very nice um braveheart or gladiator Oh, Gladiator. Okay. You know, uh, you know, he, I, I, you, know, you got to love freedom, but uh, yeah, freedom. Yeah. But, uh, you, the uh, the whole the 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 whole speech in the Colosseum. The yeah. my name is Maximus Decimus Peridius. That's just you, you can't beat that right there. That's that's the scene for the scenes. <laughs> no, that what I say about those Braveheart is a fun movie to watch. Gladiator is just a phenomenally well acted and written movie. Um, I yes. love them both. The reason I throw these movies out there is I love them all, but there's for different reasons. Um, same with uh, like I so said, Braveheart. I mean, it's just fun watching. Uh, you know them running around, and you, you go back after I've watched so many breakdowns of these movies on YouTube, you go back and you watch Braveheart where they're all running across the field. And if you look during the fight scenes, if you look at the people eight rows back, they're just kind of hitting their sticks together and all that. It's just, it's funny to watch. And Mel Gibson running through the field, he's got three different weapons. If you watch the more he (laughs) runs, they keep showing it. There's different weapons in his hands. So I was watching another movie that was that, that exact same way. Um, for some reason, I was watching Highlander 2. I don't know. It, it's, it's a horror. That's a deep dive right there, buddy. I know, I know. But the, <laughs> but the final fight scene, it's the same way. His 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 sword, keep the 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 uh, Michael Ironside sword keeps getting short, long, short, long, short, long. <laughs> it's like, wow, they filmed this on different days. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw years ago. I saw the original Highlander, and I was just like, eh, I don't know about this, and because I've never watched any more Highlander too. That's, that's that's a good pull right there. Oh my goodness, it's not a good movie. It's just not. It's but but if you like sword fighting, it's kind of interesting. It's fun. It's got you know, Sean Connery. I mean, come on. <laughs> I did okay. I did. I was not aware of that. I might have to go back and watch that. <laughs> so, um, besides um having an in depth knowledge of the Star Wars. We'll call it the trilogy, not the other three that are four. I don't even know how many there are anymore. Um, 
Rook what, uh, what, 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 what's some pack? Is there nine now? Not nine, nine of the actual saga, and then there's some individuals um, okay. floating around. What about Mandalore? Where are you at on Mandalorian? Oh, I love it. Do you? Okay, good. That, and I only watched the first season, and, and I did enjoy it. I just had oh. Oh man, it gets uh, second season's amazing. Okay, I'll go back and watch that. I'll start it. Um, so if you're not watching movies, what uh, what what are some of your pastimes? What do you like to do? Not square dancing. Well, um, you know, uh, yeah, I used to play video games a lot. I don't do that anymore. Um, so one of the things that I actually started to do during during COVID, uh, actually a little bit before COVID, and then um i picked up a lot of it during covid was um i actually made and designed my own sudoku puzzles okay uh, so there's a there's a guy out there there's a there's a pair of guys on youtube uh this youtube channel called cracking the cryptic and uh this you go to their ch their channel it's a couple of british guys and they sit there and they solve they they live solve uh sudoku puzzles and I thought this is cool. Yeah. Uh, and they started doing. I started watching them, and they started doing like uh, you know different variants of Sudoku puzzles. So there's ones with like thermometers on them, and there's there's ones with killer cages, and where the the sum of the 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 numbers in the cage add up to a total that's in the in the corner. And they so but they would go through all their logic and how they got to the answer and how they got got started, you know, picking the numbers apart and everything. And I eventually decided, you know, I think I'm going to try and make one of these things. Uh, and now 72 puzzles later, uh, I've got a whole catalog of them, um, which is pretty cool. Yes, it is. It actually, you're going to publish those at some point, you think? Well, they're, they are published um, on a website called Logic Masters Germany. Logic Masters Germany. Okay. Yep. And uh, you can actually go there if you want. If you want to go to my website, uh, mm -hmm. shameless plug. Uh, well, what, uh, tell us what's your website. Give us the address and everything. Tell us about that. But JB dot squared or no, JB squared dot dance. That's it. JB squared dot dance. Okay. All right. Uh, Ray Owens made it. So if you're interested in that. Um, and uh, so in, in the links up there, you can actually uh, there's a there's a link to my uh, Sudoku puzzles. Okay. Um, and you can see a whole bunch of the ones that I made. Now, here's here's the problem with them. If you haven't watched these guys, and actually th those guys feature have featured about uh, nine or ten of my puzzles on their channel. Uh, okay. So you can, you can actually watch them solve my puzzles on on uh, on YouTube. Um, if you if you want to watch a couple of British guys, it's, it's funny. <laughs> They're fun to watch. Um, what, is it, what is their YouTube again? It's cracking the cryptic. cracking the cryptic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, I've, I've, there's there's a few a few of my puzzles up on there, um, and and of course my 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 author my my author name is quarter through. Through <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, 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 it actually it's really funny because um, I had uh, Barry Johnson came up to me at one point and he goes. I don't suppose that's you. And I went, yeah, that's me. <laughs> he, he goes, there's this guy who does these Sudoku puzzles. Huh? <laughs> I was like, yep, that's, that's a very good imitation of Barry, by the way. That's very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, um, so the, uh, so he, he said that uh, he and Anita en enjoy watching them uh, oh. solve these puzzles and everything. It's kind of, kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I, but the, the again the problem the problem with these puzzles is if you if you don't watch these guys, the logic is pretty deep on some of them. So uh, imagine you know how 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 the Monday papers Sudoku puzzles you know like a little one star easy little Sudoku puzzle. Um, and you get you know, it gets harder and harder until you get to Sunday, and Sundays is like a a five star super hard puzzle. Okay. Now. If you look at that in a translation factor um, to like the one star puzzles on this website, Logic Masters Germany, the one star puzzles on there are probably equal to like the four star puzzles. Okay. 
and the two and three and four and five star puzzles on logic masters of which i've got several threes and fours are like 15 and 20 star difficulty <laughs> you know we're talking like super super hard because you the you start getting into um breaking into the puzzle there's mm -hmm. there's you know there's no way to get started unless you figure out the the trick to get into the puzzle and get it started mm -hmm. um so it's and and then of course you know the author gets to design that there's there's there's, there's a whole whole bunch of these handcrafted puzzles and it's just super it, i think it's super fun it was it was it was a it was a good pastime for me i i, I haven't designed one in a, quite a while i think i've done one in the last year or so but um but i've got a pretty good catalog of them so far i kind of ran out of ideas but uh you know got busy with you know square dancing again sure sure well that, that man that's super creative that's impressive i had no idea i over the years i as i've gotten older i've grabbed a couple of the the books the, that you buy at walgreens or wherever if we're going on a trip sure. and after i started figuring some of them out i was like man this is pretty easy why do people do it? but you know these are the books from walgreens that i'm getting so it's it's certainly they're all one stars i'm quite sure especially if i'm solving them they're one star so wow. You know, so they they, uh, they 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 get uh, they can get they can get quite difficult. So oh, yeah, sure. the, the uh, where is it here? The uh, the cracking the cryptic guys actually had their own puzzle puzzle book that they that they put out. Jeez. Okay. Um, and you know the, these puzzles the these puzzles in here have all sorts of different <laughs> rules and variations and everything to them, and they're just they're crazy. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm gonna. I'll I'll check that um YouTube site out. Cracking the cryptic. All right, fair enough. Well, Jeremy, what um do you have any dances coming up? I mean, outside of your club, do you have anything planned, scheduled in the next few months? Um, you know, I think the next big thing on my horizon is my wedding. Um, that, when is that? That's in November. Uh, I I didn't. I, I know you had mentioned it to me when we were at the national convention last week. Um. So I didn't know if you wanted to talk about it, you know, but so uh, when is it's in November? It's in November. And actually, okay. we're having a, we're having a dance. You know, what part of the problem of, you know, being a, a square dance caller and getting getting married is, you know, who do you invite and who do you not invite? We can't invite everybody okay. because we don't have we're not rich. Um, so, you know, you have to decide, you know, who, who, who to invite, and who not to invite. And then we figured, you know what? We can invite everybody. We with the venue that we got actually we have from Thursday to Sunday, uh, so we're having the we're we're actually getting married on Saturday, but we're gonna have a dance on Sunday, and we're like, you okay. know what, we can invite everybody to the dance. Everybody yeah. can come to the dance, uh, and and dance and have a good time, and you know Tony and Jack and Ted and they're they're all coming, and uh, nice. they've they've agreed to call a tip for me. Um, and so we're, it'll be it should be a should be a pretty good dance. Uh, Matt's gonna MC the dance for me, and we'll, we'll have we'll, I've got a few cures coming. We'll have we'll have a good time. Very nice, very nice. Well, that's awesome. That's in November. Um, any traveling ahead for calling or anything? Um, well, September. Uh, I am flying up to Minnesota to do uh the uh one of uh, the magic weekends up there, which is. Minnesota Advanced Group Including Challenge is what the acronym is. <laughs> okay. Uh, so and that's uh, so that starts on uh, the, that Friday and goes through uh, Sunday afternoon. Okay. Uh, and that's a that's a pretty good that's a pretty good weekend, um, but I, it's a lot of work because um, <laughs> it's a, a Friday night session. There's three sessions on Saturday and then two sessions on Sunday. Uh, all about two and a half hours each so wow. um you know that's a that's a good 17 hours for yeah <laughs> for calling. That, that, just, that's a lot of material for just, for just me and and of course the tricky part is these are dan Solstrom's dancers so they're really good yeah so keeping them uh interested in my advanced and challenge is a is a is a challenge unto itself <laughs> that's it and uh, back uh, Dan Solstrom, I met him um, two years ago at the, at GSI, 
he was one of the instructors working with us and um i'd never met him before and i was like man this is the nicest guy and um learned a lot from him and we've you know we've gotten closer each time we've had some time to spend the dick together danced a lot with his wife this past week at the nationals you know especially when he's calling and she's in she dances the whole time oh yeah um, so i got to dance with her a lot and uh, get to know them there i mean they're really good people and i've said that before on my podcast and all that square dancing is a whole nother being whether it be male female man woman you know husband wife the nicest people in the world and you know and just like in police work what i do normally um there's always going to be an ass for lack of a better term you know but in 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 all the thousands of people i've met whether it be dancers callers cures there's one or two probably now i've never experienced it i just know that there have to be just if you have the numbers but on the on the whole square dance callers are just some of the nicest people you know um i I got pulled in when i started going to national conventions five years ago roughly um i didn't know you know i knew the people from this area i knew tony oxendine because he was in south carolina and i'd taken a ken ratucci school with him so i knew tony um i knew a handful of others from going to caller lab but when I started going to national conventions, it was just like, hey, come on, hang out with us, you know, and it was just, it's a really good group of people. And you're in the middle of all that. So I got to know you a little bit in the last couple of um, caller labs, especially. Uh, right. I really had a lot more time with you. And right. um, so you grew up oh. in it. So you're aware of it. Um, oh, yeah. Square dance callers life and lifestyle. Oh, yeah. So, well, and, and, you know, the, the uh, it's it's funny because people always, you know, they, you, you tell people you're a square dance caller and it's, you know, they, they always have the same, you know, once you get past the, uh, yeah, I did that in high school. Uh, mm-hmm. Once you get past that conversation, uh, then then they start asking actual questions about it. And I, and I say, here's the thing uh, that I like to tell people is, and to me, this is this is the biggest draw to square dancing that there that there possibly is. You know, it's, it's not the puzzle, it's not the dancing, it's not the it's not all all the fun. It's the it's the people and the fact that I can go halfway around the world, and if I walk into a square dance hall, I have immediately got forty friends. Yep, that you is know, cool. and that and that is just cool. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. Um, it, it's a good profession. I'm glad I got into it. Um, I wish I'd have done it earlier, but I didn't know. You know, I started dancing 29, 30 some odd years ago. And, uh, you know, so I decided a few years ago to try and call. And uh, it opened up a whole new world of people to me. Um, uh, but good people. Jeremy, it has been a pleasure, brother. I don't want to keep you too long. We've been going about a little over an hour now. Um, man, if you ever get down around this way of course we're on the east coast um you're just you're just a little further northeast coast than me um love to have you come down um if you if you get another um uh pride uh dance coming up let me know because i I can slip up there pretty quick and um well down down around your area we'll see we've got uh daytona beach or not uh the uh daytona beach no uh myrtle beach uh in january uh we'll be there be there with tony and jack uh okay uh i mean it shoot me something to remind me of that because myrtle beach i mean it's it's not close to me but i've got got family in savannah so from savannah it's only about an hour and a half so i could absolutely go down there i'd love to go down and do that that's a that's a good that's a good weekend that's a fun one and then of course we've got the cruise Yep, um, I'm already booked for the cruise. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, uh, so I, that might be the next time I see. Well, no, I, if I get down to Myrtle Beach in January, but definitely that's February. It. That's it. Um, that, well, that, you can always feel free to come on up for my wedding if you want. <laughs> okay, okay, in November. Um, in November. <laughs> I, I'll see if I can convince my wife to come up there in November. She tries to stay this side of North Carolina. After, I understand. After October, November. Um, I understand. I understand. But uh, maybe I can get her to come up there and uh, do a little dancing. Jeremy, it's been a pleasure, brother. Um, it's been good, been good getting to know you in the last couple of years, and I really appreciate you doing this with me tonight. 
and um, I'll see you soon. Maybe Thanks, in Charlie. November, definitely in January or February. Thank you, Charlie. I, I, I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy these podcasts, and I think you're doing a good job with them. So, awesome. thank you, brother. Well, I will talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Have a good night, buddy. Bye.